Yo, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy Proxies. I'm back with another video. And this one here, what I'm going to be doing is going into a ranked match, playing the match. Now, at the end of each round, I'm going to be thinking about and remembering stuff that my problem, my opponent gave me problems with. And I'm going to take those exact things and go into practice mode and replicate it and see what I could have done better and how I can counter those exact things. Now, remember, we're going to jot all these down at the end of the round. And at the end of the fight, we're going to go into practice mode. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. All right, here we go. We have the matchup. I am using Hafe Alpha Ziv versus Charles DuBronx Oliveira. Right off the bat, just want to figure out how is he going to play. Lead side sidekick pushes me back. Okay. You see his block is going high, then going low. Okay. You see he's fainting low. He's fainting uh, the takedown. So I want to keep moving. I don't want to sit still. I want to keep moving. To obviously not be a sitting still target because a target sitting still is a, a target that's easily hittable. But I also don't want to sit and move too much and be, you know, focused on my own fighter. Nice. See how I sat there? That's my fault. That's one of the big mistakes that I make, and you guys may be making them yourselves. Nice one, too. Okay, that was another situation where I I froze up and let me know if you guys do the same thing. You'll you'll freeze up or you'll you'll sit there and allow your opponent to load a strike. And these are tendencies that I'm noticing that I'm making myself. OK. Where I will let my opponent get in a range. And I have I have no plan of throwing anything. And I sit still. Trying to block the strike. I can block and move. Right? We can block and move. Nice. Pushing me back. And the thing about Duke Bronx Oliveira in this specific matchup that makes this matchup. It doesn't isn't that it's hard. It's difficult. Is the reach advantage because of the uh the height okay he tried to clinch me there okay nope see right there now i'm blocking and i'm backing up instead of blocking and just sitting there and giving him an opportunity to to possibly go you know head body or something like that nice three piece i land there i do win that See, now I'm backing up. Nice. That was nice by him. Nope. Nice. Nice. Oh, I shouldn't have taken that. Okay, end of the round. So for the most part, I didn't really have any trouble with what he was doing. He wasn't doing something that I just had trouble with. He was more so throwing the the crane kick that he threw, the front kick that he threw to the body. So those are things that I could I could run through really quickly, right? The front kick, the crane kick after round one. Okay. All right, here you go. Round two. His block is going high low. Like you see how block is going like high low like that. Double hooks. I'm gonna push him back here. We won that trade and backed up front kick to the body. And I mean, that's one thing that I'm, I'm not necessarily having trouble with, but that I noticed that he's using. We won that trade right there. We hit him with the hook. Okay. 
Nope. Caught the kick. Gonna turn him towards the cage. And you can notice how, um, with me backing up and not when he throws, instead of sitting there to, to block the shot, now I'm just getting out of range. Catch the kick. And I'm playing really good defense here. As you see here, he tries to take me down now. Because obviously, you know, things in the striking department aren't going as well for him as they did in round one. Push him back. Nope. Boom. Won that trade there. Evade. So when I'm in situations like this, I have a bad habit of uh, watch out for the kick to the head. There we go. That kick didn't do much damage. I have a bad habit of <clears throat> throwing kicks, like low kicks. No. Throwing low kicks, and it gets me in trouble. See right here, gotta keep, we got to keep moving. Can't sit still. Some people will say I'm running. Okay. And this has been a really good round defensively. Like, he's probably landed. Probably landed 10 strikes in this round. No, I did not. I wanted to lean back. And just like that, just like that. We made a mistake. I wanted to lean back, and I don't know. Maybe my controller just went back and then forth. But nice. Trying to get some damage back. Because I know he knocked me down there. But I definitely think we possibly, like, let me check the stats. Because he didn't land much at all. He landed 19 strikes in that round. That knockdown is what's going to take it for him, for, uh, give him that round for sure. Which is tough because, I mean, like, r really, he got 19 strikes landed. But beforehand, before he knocked me down, remember, when he knocked me down, he got a couple ground and pound strikes in. And he got some when I got back up to the feet. But beforehand, like, I mean, 75 thrown and 20 landed. That's not really great accuracy. Right, here we go. Round three. Now, we may need a finish, but I've had rounds where I landed less and I won the round. So, I'll try to take it to the judges, but we got to win round three. Double jab. Nope. Back to the body. Because he's thinking head. Nope. Back to the body. Back to the body again. You can see we're really working his body really well. Nope. Back to the body again. The, the body setups is just disgusting. They truly are. Okay. Nope. Nope. We're going to walk him to the cage. I'm going to throw a high kick. Nope. Watch out for the crane kick or the high kick. One of the two. Ooh, we get the rock and we get the drop. We take those. Okay. Nice. Shoot the takedown. I am not surprised. 
We'll go power transition up to get back up to the feet. Another takedown. Gets denied. Back to the body. Ah. Uh, nope. Mmm. Boom. Beautiful. Beautiful. That was absolutely beautiful. I don't really think there's anything I could go into practice mode and have to worry too much about because I was really on point. Um, as far as the body shots, you know, I was on point. I was setting them up really well. As far as the strikes to the head, I was setting them up well. This was this was a really really good fight for me here, and I man I, I done everything I needed to do. So that see like I thought see okay so Judge One gave me round two, Judge Two and Judge Three gave him round two, so we clutch we actually clutched it up because how much time was left in a fight? Uh, was actually thirty nine seconds. Yeah. 39 seconds left in the fight and was able to get the finish there. But this was just pure work, right? Pure work in this fight here. Uh, great accuracy. And we have some really good work. So I'm going to go into practice mode. We're going to train going against those front kicks, which is quite simple. But again, not everyone knows how to, how to understand it. And uh, I'll be right back. All right, so now we're in practice. I have Charles Oliveira in the red corner. Hafi offers even a blue corner. Now, if you guys do not know how to throw a specific strike, all you have to do is click start, scroll down to game help, view moves. Make sure that the line is going to be under half, uh, well, Charles Oliveira or whatever fighter may be by hitting R1 or L1 on place or Xbox. That'll be uh, right bumper or left bumper. Now, the kick is going to be the front kick to the body. So basically, we want to scroll down until we see body front kick, also the crane kick. Right, body front carry here. So L2 R1 in circle, which is the rear hand or well, rear kick button. By the way, this will be in the orthodox stance. All right, so that's that. And then the crane kick. We want to look for the crane kick, which is the other kick that he did throw. Did not have crazy success, but he did have success with it. Okay, body crane kick. I'm not sure. Okay, here we go. So right bumper, and then you see how it shows the arrow down. That's holding X. Basically, that means hold down. Right. Now, I'm going to go ahead and back out of here. We're going to go to record on. We're going to have him throw the front kicks to the body. Now, this specific kick is the, right down the center line. Now, there's a couple things you can do about this kick. One, you can block it, right? Two, you can catch it by basically holding, well, holding L2 and R2 or right trigger and left trigger down at the same time right as the kick hits your stomach. You'll be able to uh, catch it. See right here. You do it too early, you're gonna just block it. You do it too late, obviously, it's not gonna be able to be blocked. But right there. Now, another option which opens up a counter window is sidestepping it by flicking your left analog stick up or down, basically to the sides, right? Like so. Now, right there, that right there opens up a vulnerability window where you can attack your opponent. Now, he threw the kick on the right side which is this side, meaning that any attack that is like on with this side will actually do more boosted damage. So for example, I sidestep it and I'm gonna hit him with a hook. I gotta move, throw him moving forward. Boom, right there. Boom, right there. Notice the base damage is 26, I did 39, right? Now, if I do sidestep it and I throw the other hand, which is on the other side, notice how I don't do as much damage because the vulnerability is going to be on this side of his face. I did the base damage of that specific strike, which is the rear hook, is 32.9. I did 31.4. Now, another thing you can do, you can lunge away from the strike, which is holding down L1 and flicking your right analog stick down or up, which will take you off the center line, basically. So, like that. Right? Same thing. That actually gave me an even higher vulnerability window to um, land a strike on him. So, boom, boom. That did 54 damage. 
Now, I could also do something like this. Remember, the counters are going to be with that same side. If your fighter has a lead overhand and they're throwing the front kicks, right? I'm not sure if the window will be... Yep, there it goes. I did 58 damage. Lead overhand. That This is a hard read. This is where you basically read and you know that's what exactly what he's going to do. 61 damage. As you see there, the vulnerability damage was 169.1%, which made him extremely vulnerable. Now, I did have some, um, some extra damage on the opponent's stamina damage, but for the most part, it was a lot of vulnerability, meaning that he was in a position where he was vulnerable and he took more damage. But remember, if you do this right here, right? The rear overhand, now the base damage is 44, right? And the strike did 52 damage. But if you look at the vulnerability, notice how it's only 100.2, which is the base damage 100 for the vulnerability. My opponent's stamina damage is what gave me the big boost in damage. It wasn't a really big boost, but it was a decent size, right? Which was 117.4%. So just keep that in mind, guys. That's going to be with the front kick now the crane kick app operates the same exact way so we're going to reset practice now the crane kick is going to be a strike like so you hold down right bumper or r1 and hold down x or circle some fighters have both crane kicks with the lead and the rear and some fighters just have one but charles Oliveira so happens to have both but this is the one he was throwing i believe so yeah for sure he was throwing the lead crane kick right Boom. Now, how do we avoid this strike? This is the same thing as a front kick, right? We step off the center line with the left bumper and flicking the right stick up or down. We can also, you know, flick our analog stick up or down. Opens up really big counter windows. Now, because this is going to be a crane kick, the opportunity of damage is going to be even higher. But remember, this is his lead kick, which is on this side and no longer on this side. So let's say, for example, I do sidestep it by flicking my left analog stick up. I hit him with a hook. Notice how I did not do a crazy amount of damage. Why? Because if you look there at the vulnerability, it was only 110%. But we're going to do that same exact thing, and we're going to throw the rear side this time. Boom. Now, 113%, but I'm going to tell you exactly why that did not activate the counter window. Because the vulnerability window was gone. Now, watch this. There goes the vulnerability window. It got to be quick. I did 197% vulnerability damage. Remember, the base is 100, so I basically did double the damage. Now, I can do the same exact thing, and I can lunge now, right? Well, I messed up there because he threw a knee, but still, crazy vulnerability damage was 183%. That just messed up, so boom. I got to throw moving forward, but boom, 124 base damage. Basically, you got to be really on point when it comes to this, what I've noticed. But notice how this doesn't give you as much damage as the other one, and this is the importance of flapping. Uh, bot, you can get up now. There you go. Boom. No, that was 194. Get up, get up, get up. Get up, please. Boom. But you can notice, man. Also, you peep that the opponent's stamina means a lot with counters as well. So that'll basically be this. This guys, I kind of feel like I'm dragging along, but I really wanted to teach you guys so you understand exactly what's going on with this. Shout out to my ranked opponent. Shout out to you guys for watching. If you did enjoy it, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe up, turn the notifications, and I'm gonna catch y'all boys in the next one. All right?